with what is full stack development what are the key skills needed to be a full stack developer should you be one and a guided route and what are the company's expectations and a lot more and this is a one stop tech chat for all your questions with me is mr arun prakash who is the ceo and founder of kobi let's start the tech chat in 3 to 1 let's go full stack development being a computer science background helps like someone wants to become a front end developer what's the fundamental languages that he should learn coming to the projects like everybody does the same project that's the one problem yeah so what is that extra thing you should do to get you know shortlisted or have that first impression okay it's very simple let's say like uh, i always say this like whenever uh, uh, you start uh studying something you will always have some aspiration to go into certain companies some xyz companies and every company will have two or three products okay so try to replicate that product if you are targeting for the company and that will be unique in most of the cases for example let's say you are targeting facebook or instagram or even uh, any of the indian companies okay they'll have a product try to replicate the product and that will be most of the cases will be unique okay and when you do it try to do think at their scale how it works okay so uh, this is with respect to the companies so everybody will have different aspirations so by that way you will have one or two projects which is unique okay and after the after the selecting the project uh, creating the portfolio everything try to deploy it okay deploy it and show in live okay. so you are telling you should publish it yes publish it Because you should you need to keep it low ah uh, that you is don't. exactly if you are not publishing most of the companies won't consider much yeah so that's a point of impression. exactly exactly that's the first point of impression after publishing so when they ask for a uh, your code you should send your github profile in that you should have your stuff so in the github profile so when i look at your code you should have a couple of things one is unit test cases okay so that you can write on your own it does uh, you, you don't need anybody help okay and little bit of commenting and little bit of uh, linting uh, when i say linting like a code cleanliness so if the code has to be in, you can just go on google this one you will be able to get it and for a developer learning beyond what somebody is telling is always good okay and uh, make sure that you express that in your interview for example you might learn from some uh, place okay it could be your college or it could be some uh, institute uh, they would have taught you xyz so beyond xyz what you have learned okay extra what that extra feature. feature do it and tell that i have learned on this my own okay because when i am hiring you i want that ex- person who wants to go to the extra mile okay so that is the thing so host it clean code extra mile these are the three activities So, how many projects are enough? Three to four. Okay. So, should in the sense of complexity, how much should be complex? Complexity level. I mean, as a fresher, people will expect you to be uh, mid level only. Will not expect advanced. We know it. Like, so if you are able to learn this way, this much, I know that he can go on Google and learn others. So that is the one thing which I I'll check it. For example. uh in our case we give our internship project same for everyone whether it's a fresher or a experienced person and we'll tell that go on google anywhere learn i don't whine but when you come and sit for the interview you have to explain it fully if you are able to explain i'm happy you have to explain the code code you have done exactly so if they are not able to explain that means they are just yes yeah copy pasting is easier but developer is different from a general copy paste is in terms of understanding if you understand and do it that will be good probably uh, for that uh, from the first itself i'll suggest everyone to go and uh, try to learn the documentation of the particular thing whatever you are learning if it is a python go and learn python documentation if it is a react go and check the uh, react documentation uh, and also try to uh, learn how to use stack overflow okay see the only difference between a uh, fresher and experienced developer is he knows how to search the experience guy that is the only difference like knowing how to google exactly that is a primary difference okay fresher he will search all over the place he the experienced people will know how to search better okay 
So, if you learn that skill from the first, it will be easier for you to crack any interview. Because whole data is there on the net. Exactly. You should know how to search. Exactly. Okay. So, when you said companies, like coming to the companies, because the com these days there is a lot of demand, people are coming in. So there will be company expectation. What do people expect? Company expects from, you know, pressures or beginners or any career change people. Okay. So, simple thing they expect is like, uh, as I said in the first uh, or the previous one. So, I uh, nowadays every company expect you to learn on the fly because uh, today it could be React, tomorrow it could be something else. Okay. You should be adaptable. Okay. For that, your learnability should be high. That is one thing. Second one is like, uh, uh, when you start something, how many times you have finished it is another check. Inherently, we will check it. So, we will not ask direct questions, we will have like a indirect questions to identify it like how many problems you have solved in your past, okay. So, that uh, and then second one, I mean that reflects your responsibility, okay. Are you taking a responsibility to go to, till the end? So, these are the primary two items which any company will expect. So, how you are learnable, how much you are able to close it, okay. So, uh, people love the closures than the openers because a lot of openers are there, but the finishers are very less. Right. So, if you could give three reasons, three main reasons why people are not shortlisted. Uh, simple thing, uh, you would have copy pasted, but uh, you could, uh, without understanding, you would have done it. That's the first thing. Uh, second one would be like uh, less number of portfolio projects. Uh, let's say I uh, are repeated, I have uh, used someone else. That is second thing. Third one is I don't know the basics. Okay. That is very important. So, if you, uh, let's say, uh, if you are appearing for React, okay, if you are, uh, if you are not good at basic JS, uh, no matter how good you are in React, I will reject you. Okay. So, you have to be strong in your uh, basics, whatever it is. Okay. So, that these are the three major reasons. One is, your basics, second one is your uniqueness, second one is your understanding, third one is your understanding. If these things, things are there, people are happy to hire you. Right. So, like coming to back end, right, what are the languages coming to the same thing, like for the back end people, I want to go for back end, if you go to give a roadmap, like how many languages, duration, percentage. Okay. Again, it is, it's one language. Okay. Pick any one language. Uh, there are popular languages are PHP. Okay, JavaScript, which is Node.js, okay, Java, which is nothing but uh, Spring Framework, you have to learn, C Sharp, Hibernate, sorry, no, uh, C Sharp, ASP.NET, okay, and then what else, Go is there, okay, Rust is there, these are like, uh, I wouldn't recommend right away to, for any startup, starters, so the, for starters, start with JavaScript or Java or C Sharp, these, out of these three, you can pick any one and then go for it. That's how it is. So, uh, the best thing is right now is JavaScript. Okay. Because you already know in the front end, you can apply it directly there at the back end as well. Node.js is good enough. Okay. That way it is like a pretty much easier for you to do it. And the one database. Okay. One, when I say one database, it's two. Actually, one SQL database, one no SQL database. When I say SQL, it could be MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, any one of these. Okay. Typically, uh, if you are starting with you will start with MySQL or uh, some people will have Oracle in their, studied in their college. Okay. Either one is good enough. Okay. And uh, when it comes to the NoSQL, there are a lot of NoSQLs, but the most popular is MongoDB. Okay. Start with MongoDB. So, MongoDB, uh, one SQL database and one language. Okay. How much duration? Uh, duration, again, for the programming language, it is again the same one month. Okay. First three, three weeks do uh, learn and the, the fourth week is to apply the logic. So, one month is for the language and the second month is for the framework in that particular uh, language. It could be Spring or it could be ASP.NET or it could be Laravel or any any framework in that. So, that one month. So, at the end of the one month, uh, two months, you should be able to build the project. Okay. And uh, uh, the last month is for the database. Okay. So, if you know the database, it could be com combination of database and AWS or any hosting platform, it could be Heroku as well, okay, or it could be Netlify, Netlify is for front end, okay, for back end, it could be uh, Heroku or AWS or Azure, okay, or it could be GCP as well. 
so any one of the hosting uh, cloud platforms and uh, the lang uh, whatever you build if it is hosted it will be good okay so you should host it that's yeah. the main thing always okay so you know there are many developers how to be a good developer back end developing is they say a bit harder uh, right okay. so be just studying the basics studying the works uh, frameworks but how to be a good developer okay there is a book called Pragma pragmatic programmer that is a good book you should read it as a back end developer and uh, uh, if you are a little experienced person you should know a little bit on the design patterns okay so those are the two active two things and apart from that if you are a fresher again the same story which i said in the front end so you should know how to document you should know how to write a reusable code how to write a clean code uh, commenting and other linting and other things in sense of protection because there is a lot of you know hacking and all of that uh, so that becomes a very important thing correct. when it comes to back end so for what for, for a fresher what should he study for such things uh, so i mean when you learn the frameworks so most of the frameworks come from uh, comes with these kind of protections uh, attack protections you should know how it is uh, what way the security is protected for example uh, there is something called sql injection so how the sql injection is handled either in the front end or in the back end how it is handled whatever framework you are learning you should know it so a little bit on the developer uh, uh, um, what is that cleanliness that's that's more than enough because as a fresher we don't expect you to be 100% compliant with the protective uh, things so if you are able to write clean code that's more than enough for us okay coming to the projects same how many projects what kind of projects three projects same story instead of front end you write a logic for the same thing and expose as a api okay the api should be uh, giving the response in a xml or json format depending upon the request so you should have this ready so you could say you can be a good front end developer i mean back end developer on how many months uh been decent one in 3 months okay 3 months okay so talking about the salary mm. what could you tell us what is the entry level salary of a front end back end and a good start so typically uh, it starts with the, for a fresher uh, the salary is almost like a 3 to 5 lakhs as a starting salary uh, in some cases if you are a, if it is early stage startup uh, uh, their affordability goes up to till i mean less up to 2 to 1/2 lakhs as well okay uh, the highest is like somewhere around 21 for freshers i have seen 17 to 21 so i have seen people gone for 15 17 21 years in our batches people have gone in this is the highest part so the range goes from 2 to 21 for a fresher and for experienced people typically it goes based on their uh, uh, previous salary and little bit on the high counter like it could be 32 uh, even 200 percent high 30 percentage uh, to 200 percentage in the career switch case now when you know in, in terms of other careers this becomes a bit easy i would not say easy if you are a computer science background you have that interest the duration takes a bit lesser time uh yes uh, so if you are cs guy the expectations on the other side also goes high okay i'll not as expect the cs guy as uh, i mean uh, i uh, for a non cs guy my expectation might be little okay okay kind of it for a cs guy my expectation would be little higher on the bar okay he has to perform better which means that he has to work harder than the normal person so this advantage uh, gets challenges for him for example i expect him to be good in data structure and algorithm okay so, and a uh, little bit on terms of uh, computer science concepts those kind of things so there he has to put extra effort in proving himself 